Hi guys, it's Double Tap. The Brico Arms, Costa Mesa, California, United States of America. It is a Jennings T380 and 380 Auto. So, it's a customer's gun, has no magazine, and it is empty. I don't even own any 380 ammo. Uh, customer wanted me to find a magazine for it. Not a problem. Found one, got it on order. It's headed this way from Numerix. Took them about a week to get it to ship out, though, because of all the panic buying of magazines. Uh, now, this one in the high capacity firearm, it's a single stack 380 auto. Uh, it's from a while back. I don't know how far back, and I didn't care to do much research on it. Uh, I do know that this is. A, Whenever you order parts for it, you have to go by Brico Arms instead of what's on the other side, the Jennings 380, uh, T380. Now, t the T380 is, you need to remember that, but Brico Arms is a manufacturer, from what I understand. Uh, but it's good to know both, uh, you know both markings. Now, there are two versions of this gun from what I understand. You have the new style, the traditional magazine release, or the Hill release. The Hill release is a European style, and whenever you're ordering magazines, you gotta know that. So, uh, I ordered the new one. It's the traditional. Um, these guns are budget line. Very close to Saturday night specials. Um, this is a 380 auto, so it is uh, blowback operated. Has a recoil plug here in the slide, right underneath the barrel. In order to take one of these apart, uh, you to field strip it, you have to fire the gun since this one doesn't have a magazine in it, make sure the safety's off. I can't fire it. Well, I have to hold down the magazine release and then pull the trigger. Okay, so, and then you push down the slide retainer piece, which retains the slide via a notch in it. You push that in, pull back on the slide, push it in, and pull up it'll come out of that notch. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now because I've already taken it apart enough times. I don't want to mess with it anymore and I don't want to mess with it through the viewfinder on video. Uh, these guns were very reminiscent of the Lorsen 25 autos and the Raven 25 autos which were pretty much identical except for a few minor things. Um, so find an assembly video on one of those and you can pretty much take this one down to the bare stock, you know, the stock parts. Um, this one looks like it's in stainless, but it's a pretty crappy stainless if you ask me. Um, I don't even know if there really is stainless, but that's what I was told. Uh. Well, no. Yeah, well, that's what I was told. Anyways, the, the uh, grips are polymer, the early version of polymer. Very plasticky, really easy to chip. Uh, you got to be careful with them. Keep them kind of lubed up, so have a little bit of oil in them so they don't dry rot. Uh, unlike today's polymer, like the Glocks and whatever. So, the way this one works is the same thing as the Lorsen 25 is you got the trigger whenever you got the magazine in. The magazine disengages the safety, the magazine safety, which lets, lets the trigger move back and forth. Okay, so you got the trigger shoe and then you got the trigger bar. Okay, trigger bar pushes up on another little lever that's right here. 
all right and that lever turns and that pulls down the sear the sear lets go of the firing pin the firing pin moves forward strikes the firing and strikes the primer igniting the cartridge uh, and the powder charge sending the bullet out of the barrel and to its intended target now the that's obviously it's got spring pressure sending the firing pin forward now when the gun it recoils the slide comes back and the uh, the firing pin catches on a on the sear again and it catches as the spring pushes it back forward and so the way the sear is shaped is it's got on the back this is in orientation to this the way the gun is pointing all right so you have a sear it's top is like this so your engagement surface is a 90 degree angle right here that is the firing pin has a, has a flat right here so it's held like this this hand is firing pin this hand is a sear so you have it like that now whenever the gun recoils after you've shot the cartridge it has another engagement surface right here that it lets the firing pin slide back over it push this down push the sear down and then it slides right back up under spring pressure and it catches on to that flat that 90 degree angle so that's how that works in there uh, I wouldn't recommend screwing with any of the engagement angles uh, it's bad enough that these guns had lawsuits on them because of odd and end stuff from what I understand uh, I'm just showing the gun I never really messed with one until now. The, they're re reminiscent of the Lorsen 25 and the Raven 25, uh, which, you know, rule of thumb, guns are incestuous. They borrow from one another in many ways. Uh, if something works, why fix it, you know? Uh, so, single stack, pretty big for a, uh, pretty big for a 380. As a matter of fact, my Glock 30 is about the same size. Width, not width, but height wise. If I can get this in the viewfinder, about the same height wise, but a little thinner. Uh, and they are just as long, so. just about as long as they are so that's your Glock 30 SF and that's the T380 so there you have it that's the way it is uh, I wouldn't rely on this gun too heavily it's a good throwaway gun uh, it's a little big for a 380 um, oh an interesting point to make about these guns is that frame and the firing pin the firing mechanism in the frame were pretty much the same for the 380 version this one and the Jennings 22 that is built off of this frame how do I know that because once you take this grip off there is a marking under here that says so and so stamping company casting company so this frame is cast metal and uh, it says uh, T380 and something something 22 uh, so and I looked that other gun up and it looks pretty much the same as this one so this is it the frame is used for both and you change uh, they change out the top end from what I from what I can understand so uh, the uh, sights on this thing, it has rubber front sight and it's got an adjustable back. Now I tried to adjust this a little bit just checking clicks. One click over, one click back making sure it still has zero and the clicks aren't necessarily tactile uh, but they're there. Uh, this is Smith & Wesson style. This one's worn out. The paint's worn off of it a little bit. 
but it is adjustable. Um, these would be pretty close range for a 380, so, uh, you know, I don't see why you would need an adjustable sight, but at least it's fairly snag free, you know? So, anyways, there it is. A T380 from Jennings or Bryco Arms. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Have a nice day.